You're watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. We're back. Our guest is uh, State Representative Carolyn Justice, a three-term member of the House who represents the 16th District. We're talking about the state of the state and the upcoming legislative session that opens uh, the uh, 28th of this month. As we mentioned before the break, there's been speculation North Carolina uh, could be in danger of running out of money uh, to pay the growing demand for unemployment benefits. Uh, first of all, do you have a, a handle on that, and what would the state do in a case like that? Well, how the General Assembly works right now, we go back into session January 28th. We'll probably be in session through the end of July. This is what's called our long session. We run in two-year cycles next year, the short session, where we'll just tweak the budget, but this is where we write it. And while we're sitting here today, the um, leadership in Raleigh is very busy with the budget writers and the budget directors and the staff in the General Assembly already addressing these issues, coming up with proposals for us of how to deal with them. Um, we're sending in ideas. If we have any ideas of things Have you heard like that, to, that the unemployment uh, uh, fund is in jeopardy? It's in jeopardy. Yes, it is. It is. As is the um, state health care for health care for state employees and, and state employees includes all the teachers uh, huge all huge thousands of people um, and, and um, though I you know I hate whiners um, when we went out of session last year we knew that we were told that within the last week and some of us begged to stay in session to solve that was problem. it a partisan did it become a partisan uh, not necessarily. we'll stay we won't not necessarily um, because there were people on both sides of the aisle who this was a why, crisis. Then why do you think they adjourned? It was an election year. People want to get back and campaign. And, and that, that was what was wrong, not partisan, liberal, conservative. It was that's what's wrong when elections get ahead of good sense. And we were told by the time you get back, it'll be in jeopardy. Leadership said, well, maybe we'll call an emergency session. We never did. And, and it's in trouble. And this is going to mean people already strapped now in this tough economy uh, state employees are going to pay more for their health care. They're going to pay more for their dependents. Um, this is just going to make matters worse. And that's a cyclical thing, you know, and then that, then those people aren't spending money because they're spending money on that. And so we're sp spiraling I'm down. fearful that we're spiraling. Mm. And, and though, I'm, though I always say to people, you're safe when the General Assembly is not in session, I think under these circumstances, we need to get into session fast. In late fine. November, Governor Easley... Uh, uh, former Governor Easley announced plans to fast track more than $700 million in state building projects as a tool for job creation and to stimulate the, the state economy. Do you support that concept? You know, it, on the surface, that just sounds like it has great merit to me. Um, that's, that, those are, that's work that needs to be done. We know our highways are crumbling. We know we've got some bridges that need to be replaced and repaired. So that's not like a teapot museum. It's a real need. Um, and we have people that need to have jobs, and we need money circulating in the economy. They need to be able to go to the store and spend some money. So on the surface, that sounds very good. However, is that the very money that we need to shore up the unemployment, because that's going to happen, and to shore up the, the health care, and to shore up uh, enough money for the additional students Do you have a reading of if Governor Purdue will continue that initiative? I think she's backing off of that just a little bit from what I read yesterday. Uh, oh, you know, she went to Washington, uh, to D.C., uh, just the other day, and she's asking for infrastructure money from there to do those projects and get them moving. I think, and I don't want to speak for her, um, I think she's hoping she'll get that money there and not have to take it out of the, out of the state's state. money. But, but I think the issue of moving those projects forward, I think, has a great merit. How much power does the legislature have in spending priorities after the budget is passed. Well, you know, the governor uh, does that. Right. The governor then, from the minute it's passed. So fast over, tracking is, is the governor's priority. That's right. I think, that, I think the General Assembly can jump in and say, no, no, that's ridiculous, don't do that. And all, you know, I think we can you know, make our voice heard. But that uh, really is up to then the governor to keep the state in ba the budget in balance. Getting back to the, uh, or talking about the new governor, she was a legislator for 14 years, mm -hmm. lieutenant governor for eight years. Mm -hmm. Uh, give us your take on her ability to deal effectively with the significant challenges that the state's facing. Well, um, you know, at this point, uh, unless you elect uh, a person who's an uh, expert in the field of economics, and that person didn't run for office, um, and has great expertise in these things, then who is the person But she right was now? the chief budget writer for the Senate. 
was she not? Uh, she participated in that. Okay. Um, yes, when she was a legislator, a senator. Um, so she has that knowledge. She has knowledge of the General Assembly and how it works. She has knowledge of all the people on both sides. She has relationships, and that's what it takes to get things moving in any legislative body, as you know, these people, and they'll work with you. She has all those as positives. I think she has taken some bold first steps. And one was to put a person in charge of the Department of Transportation that was not involved in fundraising, was not already on the board, a person who has expertise in transportation. I think that was bold, and I think Trying she Trying to get sent, rid of patronage in the I DOT. I think she sent the message she wanted to send, and that was, this is, it's, there's a new sheriff in town, and, you know, this is a new game. Though uh, Governor Perdue and I are of different political persuasions, and there'll be things she'll do that I will disagree with. I'd, and I'm sure I do things that she would disagree with, but I think that was a great first step. I think the fact that she sat down immediately and set out ten uh, directives of, you know, we're going to change this, we're going to tighten this, we're going to do this, I think that was important. She didn't lag back and wait for it to happen. What Was it important to you, or, or how did you feel about North Carolina electing its first female head of state? Well, you know, um, I think I, I, it's good. It says something about North Carolina. Uh, it says it's a new era and a new day. And I hope we can put color and gender and all those things behind us because they don't contribute to good government. And this makes a pretty bold statement about, um, about what North Carolinians are willing, how broad-minded they're willing to be. But you supported uh, the mayor of Charlotte for the... I did. I did. I liked Pat McCroy. Well, and I supported him not necessarily just because of his party. Um, Pat McCroy, um, I liked his ideals. I liked his plan and his proposal. And so that's more what I went with than anything. I, I really liked his plan. Pat McCroy, I think, had a great grasp, and I think Bev Perdue does. And, and she's already showing she's moving on on this um, Learn to Earn program and about realizing that some kids are just not college bound and we need to beef up um, a vocational education. Th some of the things that he had stood for that I, I liked. We're going to take a break. We'll come back uh, with more uh, with our guest, uh, State Representative Carolyn Justice on the state of the state in the upcoming legislative uh, session. When we come back, we'll talk a little more about the DOT and some of the problems uh, in that department. So uh, stay with us. We'll be right back.